Welcome to this YouTube channel. In this video we are going to talk about how the banking system works. So before starting this video like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel for future updates. A bank is a type of financial institution that accepts public deposits and develops demand deposits while also issuing loans. The bank might execute lending activities directly or indirectly through capital markets. Banks are heavily regulated in most jurisdictions because they play such a crucial role in financial stability and the economy of a country. In most nations, a system known as fractional reserve banking has been established, in which banks keep liquid assets equivalent to a percentage of their current liabilities. Banks are often subject to minimum capital requirements based on an international set of capital rules, the Basel Accords, in addition to additional laws aimed at ensuring liquidity. Banking as we know it today began in the 14th century in the rich cities of Renaissance Italy, but it was in many respects a continuation of ideas and conceptions of credit and lending that originated in the ancient world. Several financial families, including the Medicis, Fuggers, Welsers, Berenbergs, and Rothschilds, have played significant roles in the history of banking throughout many centuries. Banca Monte dei Pacci di Siena, established in 1472, is the oldest existing retail bank, whereas Berenberg Bank is the oldest existing merchant bank, founded in 1590. What is the definition of a bank? A bank is a type of financial institution that is permitted to accept deposits and provide loans. Financial services such as wealth management, currency exchange, and safe deposit boxes may be offered by banks. Retail banks, commercial or corporate banks, and investment banks are among the several types of banks. Banks are governed by the national government or central bank in most nations. Banks. An overview. Banks play a critical role in the economy by providing essential services to both consumers and companies. They provide you with a secure place to deposit your money as a financial services provider. You can execute typical banking operations such as deposits, withdrawals, check writing, and bill payments using a range of account types such as checking and savings accounts, as well as certificates of deposit CDs. You can also put your money aside and earn interest on it. The Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation FDIC, insures money in most bank accounts up to a limit of $250,000 for individual depositors and $500,000 for jointly held deposits. Banks also offer credit to both individuals and businesses. Your short-term cash deposit is used to lend to others for long-term debt like car loans, credit cards, mortgages, and other debt vehicles. This process aids in the creation of market liquidity, which generates money and keeps the supply flowing. A bank's purpose, like any other business, is to make a profit for its owners. The owners of most banks are their shareholders. Banks accomplish this by charging borrowers higher interest rates on loans and other forms of debt than they do on savings accounts. A bank that pays 1% interest on savings accounts and charges 6% interest on loans produces a gross profit of 5% for its owners. To use a simple example, banks fluctuate in size from local community banks to huge commercial banks, depending on where they are located and who they serve. As of 2019, there were just over 4, 500 FDIC-insured commercial banks in the United States, according to the FDIC. National banks, state chartered banks, commercial banks, and other financial institutions are included in this number. While typical banks have both a physical location and an online presence, online-only banks became popular in the early 2010s. These banks frequently provide greater interest rates and cheaper costs to their customers. Consumers choose their favorite banks based on convenience, interest rates, and fees, among other things. Banks are divided into several categories. Retail banks cater to individual customers, while several major financial services firms have retail and commercial banking departments. These banks, often known as personal or general banking institutions, provide services to the general people. Checking and savings accounts, loan and mortgage services, vehicle financing, and short-term loans such as overdraft protection are all services provided by retail banks. Many larger retail banks also provide credit cards to their customers and may also provide foreign currency conversion services. High net worth individuals are frequently catered to by larger retail banks, which provide them with specialized services such as private banking and wealth management. TD Bank and Citibank are two examples of retail banks. 
From small business owners to major corporations, commercial or corporate banks offer specialized services to their business clients. Along with everyday business banking, these banks also offer credit services, cash management, commercial real estate services, employer services, and trade finance to its customers. JP Morgan Chase and Bank of America are two well-known commercial banks, however both have significant retail banking operations. Investment banks specialize in delivering complicated services and financial transactions to corporate clients, such as underwriting and assisting with mergers and acquisitions M&A. As a result, in the majority of these transactions, they are known primarily as financial middlemen. Large corporations, other financial institutions, pension funds, governments, and hedge funds are all common clients. Investment banks in the United States include Morgan Stanley and Goldman Sachs. Central banks, unlike the other banks listed above, are not market-based and do not deal directly with the common population. Instead, they're in charge of currency stability, inflation control, and monetary policy, as well as overseeing a country's money supply. They also regulate member banks' capital and reserve requirements. The Federal Reserve Bank of the United States, the European Central Bank, the Bank of England, the Bank of Japan, the Swiss National Bank, and the People's Bank of China are just a few of the world's major central banks. Credit Union versus Bank Credit unions range in size from tiny, community-based organizations to huge, national organizations with thousands of branches. Credit unions, like banks, provide normal financial services to their clients, who are referred to as members. Deposit, withdrawal, and basic credit services are among the services available. However, there are several key distinctions between the two. A credit union, unlike a bank, is a non-profit organization that is generally operated by volunteers. They are normally tax-exempt since they are created, owned, and run by participants. Members buy shares in the cooperative, and the money is pooled to provide credit services similar to those offered by a credit union. They tend to provide a limited range of services compared to banks because they are smaller companies. There are also fewer branches and automated teller machines ATMs. What is the definition of a mutual savings bank MSB? A mutual savings bank is a form of thrift institution that was created with low-income people in mind. Historically, these people have put their money into long-term, fixed-rate investments like mortgages. The majority of MSBs were based in the United States Mid-Atlantic and industrial Northeast areas. There were 637 of these institutions in 1910. The Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation FDIC, insures the deposits of mutual savings banks MSBs, FDIC. Customers can keep accounts with low balances and receive interest at mutual savings banks. Because mutual savings banks do not have outside shareholders like typical banks, when you establish an account with one, you are considered a owner in the bank. The Philadelphia Savings Society and Boston's Provident Institution for Saving were the first mutual savings banks MSBs, both founded in 1816. The early charitable individuals in Philadelphia founded the first cooperative savings banks, as well as the first hospitals, orphanages, and shelters on the east coast of the United States. Friendly customer service, a long-term perspective, financial stability, depositor safety, enhanced accessibility, and the fact that profits, in some form or another, are reinvested in the community are just a few of the benefits of mutual savings banks. Mutual savings banks also have a number of drawbacks, including the chance of being purchased or going public, as well as being overly cautious at times. Credit unions, on the other hand, operate as not-for-profit organizations that are designed to serve their members, who are also de facto owners. Mutual savings banks operate to generate profits for their member shareholders, whereas credit unions operate as not-for-profit organizations that are designed to serve their members, who are also de facto owners. A mutual savings bank, an overview, MSB, until the 1970s, mutual savings banks were largely successful. Regulations enacted in the 1980s, specifically, although a mortgage is typically a contract between a borrower and a lender, mortgages can be pooled and made available for outside investment. Investment banks are divided into several categories. Investment banks underwrite, ensure the sale of, stock and bond issues, manage investments, advise firms on capital market activities such as mergers and acquisitions, trade for their own accounts, make markets, and provide securities services to institutional clients. Traditionally, merchant banks were banks that specialized in trade finance. The current term, on the other hand, refers to banks that give capital in the form of shares rather than loans to businesses. They don't invest in new businesses like venture capitalists do. 
What do you think about this video? Which of the following facts about how the banking system works you find most interesting? Do let us know down in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this video and want to hear from us again, be sure to hit that subscribe button before you go.